Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, I need a diamond. We're going to grab a diamond out of our diamond storage down here. We'll just need the one and I need to grab myself eight planks of wood as well because today we're going to make an episode all about jukeboxes and music discs, primarily because I think it's kind of a neat accompaniment to the banner side of things. It's talking about how to customize your world a little bit and stuff that we can collect. We collected all of the banner patterns in yesterday's episode. Today, we're going to try and collect all of the music discs and hopefully we'll be able to get all of them. There are a couple out there that are slightly more difficult to get though, so maybe there might be one or two that we have to pick up in a future episode. But for now, a jukebox can be made using one diamond and eight wood planks. It's basically like a note block, but with diamond in there instead of redstone. And the purpose of a jukebox is to play the music discs that you can find throughout the world. Or, well, there's four of them that you can find throughout the world, and a bunch more that you have to get through a very specific method that we're going to explore a little bit later. To start with, I need to see if I've actually got any music discs in my possession, because I know I've raided a handful of dungeons, but I can't remember where I've stored them all. I think one of these chests down here in the basement was some sort of dungeon loot chest once upon a time. Ah, we have a couple here in Mod drops, which is kind of an odd way to store them, to be honest, because we have found these previously in the chests attached to mob spawner dungeons. But as it happens, these two can be mob drops after a fashion. Before we talk about that though, let's head out here to what I'm thinking of as our testing grounds, this lovely flat area at the front of our house, and we're going to put a music disc on the record player. If I right click on that, it starts playing Cat by C418, which you might have heard pop up in the background music of these videos a little while ago. It's one of my favourite tracks that C418 has ever produced. And by right clicking on it like this, we can pop the record out early. If you leave it in there, the jukebox will continue playing it until it's done and then the record will just sit in there ready to be right clicked out of it. The other disc we have in our possession is 13 by C418, which is... A much more sinister sounding track, and I don't tend to use this as background music very often because I like my background music to be a little bit more upbeat. These two discs, as I mentioned, can be found in dungeon loot chests, but they aren't the only ones that can be found in dungeon loot chests. There is one more, which is called Other Side, and Other Side was added to the game in Minecraft 1.18, the part two of the Caves and Cliffs update. It started appearing in Strongholds and Dungeon Loot Chests, and it's a newer track by one of the newer contributors to Minecraft's soundtrack, Lena Rain. And it's a very difficult disc to find because it has about the rarity of an enchanted golden apple. And as we know from yesterday's episode, I've only found one of those in this world so far. So we can potentially go searching for it in Stronghold Corridor Loot Chests and occasional dungeons that we find in the world, but I think that's probably one that we're going to run into incidentally, and I don't really feel like making an episode going and searching for just that disc today. I'm also going to check my loot box here just to make sure that I haven't gotten any other discs in here. No, unfortunately we don't, which means we haven't found the other treasure disc, the other disc that it's only possible to get through one specific place, and that is Piglin Bastions, where you'll find a red record with a yellow center called Pig Step. Now I am interested in going and seeing seeking out some more bastions today and seeing if we can get hold of the pig step disc, but we're going to do that later because for now there are a bunch of other music discs we can get hold of right here in the overworld. And in order to help us do that, we're going to make a redstone contraption that will allow us to trap creepers and skeletons nice and easily. I'm going to grab some deep slate so that we have some blocks we can push around. I'll need to grab my redstone box for a few pieces of redstone dust, a lever and some sticky pistons. Let's also grab some bone blocks and some moss for this because, I don't know, we could stylize the farm a little bit here. To provide a testing environment for all of this, we're going to come back to one of my favorite locations, the beach. This area just seems to be a nice place to conduct little experiments like this. It's nice and open easily lit up if we need to, but we're probably going to remove some of the torches from here today. We're going to dig a hole here, a three by three hole, only two blocks deep. We're going to grab some sticky pistons from our redstone box, and we're going to place those in a plus shape here with a hole in the center. That hole we're going to fill with some redstone dust, and we're going to put the four bone blocks. These don't have to be bone blocks, of course, but this is the side that we're going to trap a skeleton in, so it feels kind of appropriate to me. We're going to put a block over the top of that, and the sand here will be supported by the redstone dust below, so we don't have to worry too much about that. We can fill in these corners around the outside and now we're going to get ourselves a stone pressure plate, which I don't think I have in my redstone box. So we'll dig a couple of pieces of stone out of the bottom of this creeper hole and we'll use them to make ourselves a stone pressure plate. That can go in the center of these bone blocks here and then when something steps on top of these, 
the bone blocks are immediately going to react. They're going to trap whatever it is inside this area. I think to make sure that whatever it is doesn't pop out of the corners, we're going to leave the deep slate blocks around the outside like this. And what we're going to try and do is lure a skeleton into this area. Now, we're also going to add a roof on the top of this so that it's two blocks tall in there, meaning that whatever steps in here when it ends up on the pressure plate is going to be trapped in here and unable to get out. Of course, for now, that means me as well, but I have the power to just dig my way out of here, which the skeletons will not. Next up, I'm going to make some tinted glass. And we should only need one block of tinted glass for this. We're going to bring two with us just for the sake of it and because that's what the crafting recipe dictates. And on top of this 3x3 three three area of deep slate here, we're going to cut out a hole. We're going to put the tinted glass in there and we're going to have a piston facing downwards on top of this block. So we might need to do a bit of finagling here just to make sure that the sticky piston can face down like so. There we go. And once a skeleton is in here, what that's going to do is block the skeleton's line of sight. If we pull a lever to activate that sticky piston, the tinted glass block is going going to come down into the skeleton's hitbox and the skeleton's no longer going to be able to see anything around it. You can do this with glass instead of tinted glass, but you need to make sure that this area over the top is more covered because when the piston moves, it's actually a non-solid block. I think the rest of the time it might block skylight, but if you've just got a piston and some glass there, there's a chance the skeleton in here could catch fire from daylight, and we don't want that to happen, so tinted glass is probably the way to avoid that. Once the skeleton is in here, the tinted glass is going to block all light getting to the skeleton regardless of the time of day. We're also going to need a name tag for the skeleton because we need to make sure it stays persistent and I think we're going to call this one Dr. Xylophone. While we're waiting for night to fall and for Dr. Xylophone to make an appearance, what we're going to do is come out three blocks in this direction like so and we're going to create another 3x3 three three area under which a creeper will be trapped. We're going to create exactly the same type of trap here with the four sticky pistons facing upwards like so. We're going to place a redstone dust in the center there. We're going to cover the sticky pistons with whatever material. I like moss because it kind of, you know, goes with the creeper color palette. We're going to put a sand block in the center of there, cover that up with a stone pressure plate. And now this should be good to go to trap a creeper that wanders in. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe moss was not the best idea. I completely forgot that moss was broken by pistons. That's my bad. Let's go and get something else that's green. Lime green concrete. There we go. Gosh, that would have been bad, wouldn't it? Okay, <laughs> there we go. Lime concrete all the way around there. Now when a creeper walks in, it will be trapped. And now our goal is to trap both the skeleton and a creeper in here during the night. In order to make sure that we can close the skeleton in there with the tinted glass, we're going to put some redstone up here. We're going to lay a few redstone dust just along there. We're going to have that come to this point here where we can have a lever on one side, and that's going to allow us to switch on and off the piston that's controlling where the tinted glass is. So once the skeleton's in there, bam, we can close that off, and the tinted glass is going to prevent it from either burning in the sunlight or seeing the player when we're walking around the farm trying to make a few changes. I'm going to take down a few of the torches from around here so it'll be a little more likely that the creepers and skeletons are going to spawn in this area and we should be all set to go. So I'm going to wait for a night to fall and we'll have a go at trapping a creeper and a skeleton. And then I'll explain what on earth any of this has to do with music discs. Okay, night has fallen and this is the point at which the skeletons and the creepers should come out to play. The first difficulty is going to be getting a skeleton to walk in here because skeletons AI is a little bit predictable. The zombies will just follow you around and the skeletons will do that too, but they'll usually try and walk side to side and a lot of the time, they'll actually end up trying to avoid the player if you run towards them. So the trick to getting a skeleton to follow you is really to run away. We'll take out some of these creepers around here in the meantime because we don't need them quite yet. And we're going to try our best to get this skeleton here to walk into the other side of the farm. The farm that the zombies are currently occupying. Let's see if I can try and pressure him into going into the trap. Yes, oh, go on, go on. You're so close. Get in there, get in there. Well, I'm now inside this thing with the skeleton, which is a little bit of a tough call. Yes, finally. Okay, we got him in there. It was a little bit tough there. I ended up walking into the thing with the skeleton. And now we should be able to pull this lever and the tinted glass is obscuring the skeleton's view of us, which means he goes completely docile. He's not going to bother us at all in there, and we can kill this zombie who is not wanted inside the farm at all. Now the skeleton is in place, we can actually remove these deep slate blocks around the outside because they're just there to guide the skeleton into the right place and make sure he doesn't pop out on the corners. He shouldn't do that now, and at this point we can probably get some sleep so that the skeletons and zombies around here burn off in the daylight, and what we're left with is any creepers that spawn during the night. Well, except for this one zombie who had the clever idea of walking into the farm while I was sleeping. There we go. 
go. Now we should be able to lure a creeper over in this direction. And there's a couple of creepers that have spawned over here on the beach. Hopefully a few of these won't bother despawning until we're done here. It's simple enough to get a creeper to walk into this side of the farm. All we should need to do is stand here, back off a little way, and there we go, the creeper is inside the farm. Now I get to explain the fun of this mechanic. So if we release the skeleton from the other side here, it's going to see me and start shooting towards me. And it's going to do a pretty bad job of actually hitting the creeper in the meantime. But what we're going to do is dig a hole, let's say four blocks back from where the creeper is standing. So we have a one block deep hole and that will cause the skeleton's angle of aim to adjust a little bit to the point where it's shooting the creeper and the creeper gets killed by the skeleton firing an arrow. And when the blocks retract, it has dropped a music disc. So this is a pretty universal mechanic of skeletons and creepers. If you deal enough damage to a creeper and then have a skeleton shoot it, as long as the creeper doesn't explode, which unfortunately this one is going to, yep, a creeper that is killed by an arrow shot from a skeleton will always end up dropping a music disc. This is a guaranteed drop in those circumstances. And so what we have now is effectively a music disc farm because this skeleton can stay here in his box. We're gonna name tag him so he doesn't despawn. And any creeper we lure in here, we can just stand in this hole. The skeleton will guaranteed shoot the creeper and that will allow us to gather music discs that we can't get from dungeons, bastions, or anything else. This track, Strahd, has a really nice kind of steel drum vibe to it. I always really like this one. We're gonna leave that playing in the background while we name tag Dr. Xylophone over here. All right, our skeleton is name tagged. Yeah, let's switch that off from being in the background. Editing this video with all the music on in the background is gonna be super fun, but there you go. You can see Dr. Xylophone's name tag is in place and we can walk all the way up to him on this corner and he's not even gonna shoot us because his head is firmly encased in that block of glass. And so that is three music discs that we have to our name so far. That's a pretty tidy record collection, but I think we can get hold of more. So I'm gonna spend a couple more nights farming some creepers out here to see if I can get hold of more music discs. And of course, you could automate this in a way if you wanted to, because we have a hostile mob farm out here in the bay, and it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to imagine hooking up something like this to one of the farms like the one we just built, where it would feed in mobs one by one, and any creepers shot by the skeleton in the farm could be very easily turned into music discs. There are even ways that we'll cover later in the series of making mob farms like that only spawn creepers, or there are even ways of sorting out all of the different mobs so that the creepers go into one place, the zombies, skeletons, witches, whatever else, go into a different place. And in this case, we could have all of the creepers file down into this area, where one at a time, Dr. Xylophone here would turn them all into music discs, and that way we could get a pretty permanent record collection. The creeper on my shield is starting to make a whole lot more sense now. Here's our next batch of creepers, freshly spawned, and it's going to be kind of difficult to contain a bunch of these while we work on one at a time, but we'll we'll figure out a way somehow. Usually the trick is to run away far enough that only one of the pack ends up following you, but that's sometimes a bit of a tall order when there's this many creepers patrolling around. <laughs> of course, never turning your back on a creeper is something that's pretty obvious to us at this point, but there we go. We got another one trapped in there. He's <laughs> just kind of sat in the hole. We might have to take out this guy because he's a little bit too close for comfort, but we have another creeper lined up for the music disc treatment. And let's see what disc we got this time. Ooh, the black disc. I believe this one is Stahl. Yeah, that's one of the good ones. All right, we'll put that one in the music disc shulker box. And let's see if we can grab another couple of creepers before they end up despawning. And there we go. Another disc for the pipeline. Oh, that time, I believe. Yes, we got another copy of 13. So as you can see from that, we ended up getting a duplicate of one we found in a dungeon chest. So these two can be obtained by farming creepers as well. In fact, the only two which are uniquely treasure discs, the only two music discs you can't get by farming creepers this way are Pigstep and Other Side, which are found in the Bastion chests and Strongholds or Dungeons respectively. This should be the last creeper for the morning roundup. Let's see which disc we get out of this guy. And then I think we'll head back to the nether and go searching for Pigstep in Bastions. Oh, that's a broken record and that's the creepy one. This one is 11, which is kind of the counterpart to 13. It's looking a bit like a broken style disc, but this one still plays in a jukebox, despite the fact that it looks kind of broken. It's just meant to be part of like a bit of horror lore, I guess, for people to speculate about.
Yeah, it's pretty creepy. I don't like that one all that much. So <laughs> we'll put that one back in the shulker box here and we'll leave the jukebox in there as well. We'll pop that back in the ender chest so that we don't end up losing it if we end up getting into a tough situation in the nether. But I think it's time to go out looking for that elusive pig step disc. So having searched the nether for a little while, I found a bastion that I do not believe we have raided before. And if we want to find a pig step disc, we need to find it in one of the generic bastion chests that just generates more or less everywhere. It's not one of the ones that's specific to a bridge bastion or a treasure bastion or anything like that. It's just going to be in one of the regular chests that we'll find around here. So I'll have to be extra careful if this is a bastion we haven't raided before because there might be a few piglin brutes around. Mostly I want to see if there's a way we can get into this one from the top because from the sides it looks like that's more or less covered in lava so maybe we'll try and dig into it from the top down somewhere okay yeah here we go we're starting to open out some of this and what type of bastion even is this is this a housing one it doesn't look like a hoglin stables to me which is the one that we haven't encountered before yeah it looks like that is a housing we do have the chest in the center there and i don't think i've been to this one before there's not really any signs that i have and it's all encased in the netherrack to begin with so i'm trying to be careful exploring this i don't have my usual lava bucket so any piglin brutes are around here are going to be after me but I think maybe there's a chest down there that might be worth checking out if we can get over there. Yeah I see a piglin brute patrolling the lower reaches of this one well no worries we should be able to avoid him if we're careful. The chest is right down here so what could be inside generic bastion chest number one. It is not the pig step disc unfortunately a bit of gold in there though. <laughs> there's another chest down here which once again I have to be a little bit wary of any hostiles that are going to come up and get me. I believe there is a piglin kind of cautiously watching this one but perhaps not cautiously enough because <laughs> I'm gonna block this section off here and unless a piglin brute drops on me from above I should be able to raid this chest another snout banner pattern <laughs> but no sign of the pig step disc yet I'm seeing a chest lower down on this side of the bastion here as well it's kind of in this room down here oh unfortunately no pig step disc for us there either but I've grabbed the gilded blackstone I'm gonna make my way out because I think one of the brutes just spotted me we do still have that chest in the middle of course but I think the loot on that one is a bit more specific I don't think it's a generic chest that pulls from the same loot table as many of the others yeah there is one chest down there as well and I think if I'm careful I can swoop down into here we might be able to grab the chest from this angle yes there we go we got a soul speed book in there and a bunch of gilded black stone but once again unfortunately no pig step disc so it's certainly not a guarantee that we're going to find it in this area and you know what I hear a lot of hoglins running around so I want to protect myself a little bit here in here might potentially be a good shout because I believe these at the bottom of the foundation here actually pull from the same loot table as some of the other ones. So we've got some Gilded Blackstone, another Soul Speed book. Once again, unfortunately, no pig step disc. It's looking like it might be pretty difficult to find. But we're inside the ramparts now, which means more opportunity to encounter piglin brutes, but it also means potentially a better chance of the music disc as we get further up. So let's see if we can take out this guy one on one. Whoa, he hit really hard. Okay, I need to ball this off. Oh, yikes. Yeah, that was not good. You see how much damage I took right there? This is why I don't fight piglin brutes one on one. This is why I pour lava on them instead. It just makes the whole process remarkably simple. This is the problem with wearing a helmet that doesn't have protection, elytra, which don't have any opportunity for protection, and fire protection on my boots, which is honestly not doing me all that well right now. If we're going to get a pig step disc in this bastion anywhere, this is probably going to be the place we'll do it, because I'm pretty sure all of these chests along the top here are the generic kind that can include the pig step discs. So let's hope that we can cook these piglin brutes easily enough and head on over to check the chests out. And this time, since I know people have reminded me of it in previous episodes, we're going to use the hopper method of extracting some of the items from this chest. We're going to put a hopper down underneath here. It's going to pull all the items out of the loot chest and we get to sort through them as we go. I don't mind having a bit of extra netherite scrap. I am running a little low on that after all. Let's do the same with this chest here. And it sounds like there's another brute around here for me to cook. Obviously, with this, we do have to chuck out the items one at a time to make sure that there's room for something new and there it is ladies and gents we have a copy of the pig step disc oh fantastic i'm so happy we managed to make it out here to the bastion to check these chests out and you know what there doesn't seem to be that many other piglins around so we can just make sure that none of the other chests have a copy of it as well we got a soul speed three book and a diamond pickaxe with fortune two in there very nice and hey look a golden apple not an enchanted one so we're not going to replace that other one quite yet but i do not mind having a couple more of those. So we'll break our hoppers underneath here because I'm happy to take those home with me. We'll leave the rest of the chests 
and all in all, pretty successful mission. Now all I have to do is get out of here and get home without a piglin brute breaking my legs, which <laughs> might be easier said than done. Before we go, of course, we might as well check this chest in the center, which is going to mean getting a couple more brutes mad at me, but <laughs> that's fine if we can get up here and get away from them. Gonna chuck out a few of these spare items from my inventory, grab what's ever in this chest, which looks like another snout banner pattern, and the local piglins are a little mad at me, so I think it's probably time to get out of here. Hey, pretty successful heist, all told. I'm so happy we managed to get a copy of Pig Step in the end. And so after all that excitement in the nether was over and done with, I decided to come back to the overworld, spend a little bit more peaceful time around folks like the Wandering Trader, and get a little bit more record farming done over at the beach. And we now have a pretty sizable selection of records. We've got a whole bunch. We even have duplicates of 13 and Cat from the uh, dungeon chests, but we also got a duplicate of Strahd there as well. We are still missing two of these, I think, which are Blocks and Moll. We don't seem to have either of those in here, and I might also be missing another one. Of course, we are still missing Other Side, but hopefully that's one I'll be able to check out in a future episode if we happen to stumble upon one in a future stronghold or a dungeon chest. And while I've been here at work in the overworld, I have been working on something a little different. I decided to spend a bunch of time on a recent live stream just figuring out how I was going to lay out my storage building. And I think I have finally settled on a design I really like. We've got a couple of curved areas here. If we fly up into the air, you'll notice that that one over there kind of sinks into the ground because it mirrors this curve here on the opposite side. And while we haven't quite worked out all of the aspects of the outside or the inside really yet, we have a roof over our heads in here, which is going to lead up to a second floor. And who knows what we're going to end up putting up there. But for now, I decided to move the banners from yesterday's episode in here. And I think this area is starting to look a little bit more complete. Anyway, when it comes to some other mechanics that we can use at Music Discs and the Jukebox for, there are a couple of hidden gems here that I wanted to cover very quickly before we wrap up today's episode, because I know for certain that some of these are going to come in handy in future. Let's grab a comparator out of our redstone box. Let's grab a bunch of redstone dust and we're going to set this up attached to the jukebox here we're going to grab a selection of records and see what this does because if we take a comparator output from a jukebox and then we run a bunch of redstone dust along here i think it'll probably be best to show this by way of a redstone lamp display so let's craft a few redstone lamps using what glowstone i have on me we'll probably put those in the floor and you know what we'll probably fill up the last section of this with pistons because i don't have enough redstone lamps on me right now and i don't feel like going over to the village to get some more glowstone from the traders over there. I'm probably going to go into my music and sounds and turn down the jukebox and note blocks volume control there just so we can see this in isolation and I can keep the music running in the background. But if we place a music disc into the jukebox with a comparator output from it, it will actually output a different redstone signal depending on which of the records we put in there. So Cat, as you can see, outputs a redstone signal strength of two for the comparator to read, and we have two lights lit up here in our redstone lamp display. Now let's put that back in and let's put in 13. That one only emits a redstone signal strength of one. And you might imagine that that outputs a signal strength of 13, but that is actually preserved for the 11 music disc, which lights up all the way down to here, which I'm pretty certain that we've got 13 things in this row right now. That is signal strength of 11. If we look at the F3, yes, power of 11 there on the targeted block data on the right hand side. So the name of the record actually corresponds to the redstone output that we get from measuring the jukebox with a comparator when that disc is playing. We'll put in pig step as our primary example of one that fills it all the way to the end because I believe pig step and other side output a signal strength of 13 and 14 respectively. Yes, pig step right here is outputting at a power level of 13. So that is, I think, the 13th music disc in the game and other side is the 14th. So maybe there is room for one more if we wanted to get the full signal strength of 15. If we put weight in there, as you can see, that fills up to signal strength of 12. So that's also a pretty good one. Mellow High, the purple music disc gives us a signal strength of seven. You can see where all of this is going. Basically, each record has a different unique signal strength. And one of the things you can use that for 
is a system of keys to get you into hidden areas of a base. Say, for example, that you wanted to hide an area of your base if you wanted to have a storage system like this, but certain sections of it only opened up with redstone, you know, piston doors and that kind of thing. When you put a certain record into a jukebox, that could create a system of codes that only you know, and it could be a really neat thing to use these music discs for if you wanted to play them in a jukebox and have that open up different areas of your base. Of course, it might be a little bit obvious to anybody walking past because they hear music coming from your base and they'd know where you were at in your base when each of the records were playing, but I still feel like it's a fairly neat system that you can set up, it's even in your single player worlds, to have a bit of fun with a redstone lock. There are, of course, many other things we could do with with that mechanic and I'm sure we'll end up exploring a few of them in the future of this series but for now folks that's where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft survival guide. I'm going to be doing a little bit more record farming off camera and unfortunately the pillagers shooting the creepers isn't an option because I would want to use that patrol down there if we could. But folks thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft survival guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.